Well guys, welcome to the Arcade Repair Tips Seminar for the Houston Area Arcade Group Expo 2013. We're very excited to be here, excited to see all you guys, and we're going to give you guys um, just a little bit of information today. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to give you a brief introduction of who we are and what we do. And then we're going to be talking about our Volume 4 DVD release, which we released in September. We'll just talk about some of the bonus features that are on there, let you guys see the commercial and all that good stuff. Then we're actually going to show you how to discharge a monitor. We're going to be making the tool today to discharge a monitor, and we brought a monitor to power up and discharge if you guys want to come up here and try it out. And of course, we'll take questions from you guys, and we'll wrap it up after that. So let's get started with our uh, Volume 4 DVD. So we're going to play the commercial for it real quick, and we'll go from there. I might have to turn it up. Is it coming from the projector? Is it CV? Oh, sorry guys, about the audio. Hey. Oh, and of course I had to stop it too. That wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Come back here. Anyway, well, I won't worry about that too much. But basically, we're, we released our DVD on September 13, 2013. Uh, our Volume 4 DVD contains two discs, a main and a bonus disc. The main disc has 12 videos from our YouTube page, so if you guys have seen our YouTube videos before, you've probably already seen those videos. But the bonus disc contains new content that found on our YouTube page. Over three hours of new content, and most of this new content is bonus material and stuff that'll help you guys even further with some of your arcade repair, you know, knowledge and all that good stuff. Um, we usually sell for 25. Today we're selling for 22 after the, after the seminar. If you guys are interested in it, please let us know. We've got a couple of copies with us. So let's talk about the bonus content that's on this DVD. We have a couple of videos we call quick tip videos. And these are little quick tips that we usually shoot while we're shooting other videos, but maybe just a little bit of information that we want to get in there. And so one of them is like how to find arcade games. And we basically show us picking up a black tiger from a guy named Vince. And we'll show you a clip here in a second of that. And then uh, we talk about using a Jamma test rig. If you guys were here last year for the hang, we actually showed off that Jamma test rig, which is pretty awesome. So it's very nice to have if you want to roll it up to see if your monitor's working in your game or whatever that the case might be. We also talk about adding pins to a Jamma harness. For those of you who have Jamma harnesses, you want to add a pin to it, maybe it's missing pins already. It's a really good thing to do. We also have recognizing bootleg boards. A lot of people don't know the difference between original boards and bootleg boards. So we go over some of the differences between the two. And we talk about working with Capcom CPS2 games. And this is a video we actually shot after another video, our troubleshooting games that are playing blind video, because we actually did a CPS2 game in that. So I'm just going to show you a quick clip of Vince here from some of the bonus footage. You don't really have to hear it too much. Since you can't hear it, you can hear um, it. it's real funny when we're you guys, we just wanted to show you part of, you know, kind of like how you find games. Look what this is in, this guy's yard, right? We, uh, we call him on the phone, we actually have the whole video, and the guy's like, okay, you're going to go down to where lightning hit the tree last spring and take a left. <laughs> then you'll see a Camaro on, on some cinder blocks, take a right there. No lie. As we're getting close to this guy's house, the road is getting smaller and smaller, right? <laughs> And then when we get there, we see all these beware of dog signs. <laughs> so I'm getting the guy back on the phone. Hey, it's got beware of dog signs everywhere. Uh, what kind of dogs? Y'all can't hear this dog yelping in the background, can you? You can see him. Yeah. <laughs> Pomeranians. <laughs> How many Camaros on blocks did you pass? We passed, well, we passed several, but you know, this was a, I think it was a Trans Am on blocks. Actually, you take a right there where the Trans Am was on blocks. Now, a real interesting thing about Vince here is that the way we met him was he was selling video games, console games, at Camp Trade Days. For those of you who are familiar with the world famous Camp Trade Days, he was actually out there selling console games and dogs, of course. That's the other part of his business. And so he just knew that we were looking for arcade games. He found one and he gave us a call, so we went out here to pick it up. And so uh, it's funny, we just started, you know, we, we, like to, we like this kind of stuff. You guys like to go and find games, so we begin to film when we go to pick up a game. 
or whatever. There's the killer dog. Signs everywhere. Beware of dogs. I mean, we didn't know what we were going to run into. So we add a little bit of, of this kind of stuff to our DVD sometimes just for fun. Right. And, you know, Vince was just an interesting character, which is why we threw this on here. Uh, he was nice enough to let us film. This video was actually filmed way before Arcade Repair Tips was ever founded. This is like back in 2004. So this is actually about a nine-year-old video now. And this is before Craigslist. This is before a lot of the stuff that we have now to be able to find games. We just got this one kind of word of mouth. Right. So well, we got it. You guys a lot of times have a business card. Make up a business name. Make up. Just put your name on it. Hand them out. You ever run it? We saw this guy selling console games. Hey, if you ever run across a stand-up or a pinball machine, give us a call. And of course he says, well, I got one at my house out here. You guys come. It made a good deal on it. So there you go. So that's a sample of one of the quick tips videos that we have on our volume 4 DVD. Two Tigers? Was that Black, that game? No, it was Black Tiger. Black Tiger. Black okay. Tiger. So those of you who are familiar with, I think, old Capcom game. So. Now, we also have extended videos. Now, what we started to do is, with our YouTube videos, we show you basically a sampling of what we're doing, and then we do an extended part of that same video to show you even more in-depth what's going on with the repair. And so, on this DVD, we only have three of those, but we take our YouTube video and we basically add a lot more footage to it. So, we have wiring and arcade using the jam standard, we have troubleshooting games that are playing blind, and we have replacing a control panel overlay. We're going to show you a clip today from troubleshooting games that are playing blind. And the original YouTube version of this is only about 8 minutes of the whole video, but the extended cut version actually goes 35 minutes. So that's about how much more additional footage you get with the DVD. You actually get, the extra, <coughs> you know, what, 28 minutes of footage that really shows you a lot of stuff. And here's just a sample of that right here. Okay, this is the hop here. So this is us actually replacing the horizontal output transistor on an arcade monitor. So we talk about this in the YouTube version of this, but here we're actually going to show the replacement. Right. So, no, he's basically well, Tim's explaining. I'm, I'm demonstrating that a lot of people go, well, where, you know, what's the hot? Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? You know, where are you talking about? So what I said was, what helped me was go ahead and order the part. <laughs> it was easy to tell that this was it, you know. And so by ordering the part already, it made it simple. Even though I knew that, sometimes when I didn't know, that's how I used to yeah. figure out so stuff. So basically time. we knew it was a K7000 chassis, but maybe you don't know what the HOD is. And so what Tim's saying is just order, you know, contact Bob Roberts, say, hey, I need a HOD for a K7000 chassis. And then at, when you see the part, it's very easy to figure out which one is the part. Of course, they're always labeled for the most part, but as we know, numbers come off parts all the time or get smeared or smudged or whatever that is. And so this, this clip just shows actually, like I said, we're actually taking it off, we're desoldering it and doing all that good, yeah, good this stuff. This video is so cool because uh, you guys have run across that before, you got a game playing blind, y'all know what that means, right? It, everybody's there, but there's no picture, and literally everything that can cause that was wrong with this chassis. Pretty much. <laughs> so, I mean, we replaced the flyback, we replaced the fuse, we replaced the diodes, we replaced the hot. I mean, Literally, one thing and then something else would go wrong with it. Now, in the one, full video. Yeah, and one thing about, you'll see on these extended videos, you'll see this extended video tag up in the corner. That just means that this is extra footage you didn't get on YouTube. But one thing about this is that, you know, you, you've got kind of more, a more intimate setting. Whereas in our YouTube videos, we're more like talking at a camera. It's very formal. Here, you just see us doing the work. And so, it, for those of you who want to see that, you want yeah. that extra depth, you want that extra footage, this gives you a really good idea of exactly what's going on. We so when we, say, when we say replacing the hot, what does that mean? But we're actually showing you here, this is what it means. And he's using some solder brain right now, he's going to take that thing off. And, and it's pretty, pretty good, but we also show replacing a flyback on this video, and, and uh, like Tim said, some other stuff as well. So. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the bonus videos on it. We have one picking up and unboxing a new pinball machine. I was very fortunate enough to have the opportunity to buy a brand new pinball machine, and so we filmed that, we put on this DVD. Um, we had an original cut of installing artwork on our arcade cabinet. The one that's on YouTube is actually not the first cut of that. This is the original cut, and so we went back, we did some commentary on it because we didn't like the way it turned out. It came out horrible. Right, so we went, we went and did a commentary track on top of it so you guys can watch that and listen to that. And then we have two videos here from our friend Mark over here about a tour of the Korean gaming and co uh, coin op scene and a warehouse raid in Korea. And so I'm going to actually show a clip from the warehouse raid so you guys can see what Mark found on his trip to Korea. And I'm going to bring him up here and see if he has, a, if you guys have any questions for him about, okay, about it. Um, this is when I was in Korea in the Army. Um, this is one game that I found in the Korean game warehouse. Um, this is Gorilla, and then it says Gorilla in Korean here. Now, the objects in the game, you're like, okay, what's going on here? And then you look a little bit lower, 
And you see, the object is to, <laughs> is to kick the gorilla in the butt. Okay, it's like a punching bag, but it's a it's a kicking bag. Okay, so they've got a lot of different uh, games that you've never even seen before in Korea. And uh, as I walk around this game warehouse that I found when I was in Korea, uh, I show a lot of these different games that you probably will never ever see. And uh, very very interesting kind of stuff. You know. Now, uh, past this point, now you found a lot of parts, yeah. and we're going to show that here in a second. You yeah. found boards galore, Just Neo Geo piles. parts, all sorts yeah. of stuff, and you'll see some of it here. Yeah, it's here Obviously, that looks yeah. a little damaged. Yeah, yeah. if your board yeah. looks like this, okay, don't do that. Yeah. And then, uh, going around here, let's see, yeah, just chassis everywhere. Here's, you can see this thing goes. Now, where was this located in Korea? How did you find it? I found it because, what I always tell people, if you're into this hobby, tell people. Okay, I, I was a supervisor. I told every one of my soldiers I was in this hobby, even though I didn't have any arcade games while I was in Korea. Well, one of my soldiers, they were out doing something on the weekend in Seoul, and they had to use the bathroom. They went inside this building. It was full of arcade games. So they came back and they told me, hey, you found a bunch of arcade games. So I was like, oh, come show me. the boards. Yeah. Kind of. And uh, I, I, I was like, hey, I'll buy you lunch. Take me down there and show me where it's at. And it was like, I mean, you had to take the subway, go down this dark alley, turn this way, you know, it was really... Oh, this is you getting fussed yeah. at by a cur uh, by a Korean. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Neo Geo games? Yeah, I was trying to buy some Neo Geo games, and then the lady was like, oh, okay, you know, what are you doing here? And then that's a little store they had in there uh, for the vendors. This warehouse was kind of like divided up into cubicles. So every one of these cubicles was a different vendor. This cubicle happened to be like a country store there, kind of buy your cigarettes. But yeah, this is the Neo Geo guy. He had a bunch of these Neo Geo cartridges. Uh, I bought a lot of those. And, uh, the stuff that I could carry home, I took with me. But and shipped back, right? Yeah, I shipped it back. Uh, I couldn't take a whole arcade cabinet. So, so how much did you actually end up bringing home? I brought, I think it was like about over 100 different, 100 cartridges. Neo Geo cartridges. Neo Geo cartridges, yeah, and I ended up selling them off and stuff. Did you get a good so, deal on them? I got a great deal. I, mean, <laughs> I made about $2,000, over $2,000 in the whole deal. deal. Yeah. So, so if you're ever in so, Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's just uh, something there. Just something else that we included on the DVD, just because there's one thing, we share the love of the hobby, and this is part of the fun, right? And it's not just all about, if all you do is fix games, it's kind of boring. We were, that's our, our motto, is fix the game and play the game. So I hope you guys, uh, and that's, I, I was, how many, it's, I know it's way over an hour. Uh, that's just a clip. Yeah, it's way pretty, over the, an hour. The warehouse tour is pretty long. And he shows all it. kinds of games that they yeah. have that we don't have. I just find that kind of stuff kind of interesting. Yeah. So. And then I film a lot of other uh, Korean games that, uh, you know, it might be a game on the street, but it's just really crazy, like that gorilla game. So I took the time to film it and show it. Yeah, and in Korea, they just have quote, like games on the street. Like everywhere. you said, just yeah, on the street, in everywhere. the rain, the, trees, the rain's hitting it all day, and they don't care. So what's the biggest game on there? Um, Tekken 6 was probably Yeah, Tekken or the new Street Fighter. Tekken 6 was big, though. That was probably the biggest. Awesome. So that guy is just more material that's on there. He also gives you kind of a, a whole overview. He goes through a couple of arcades and stuff. It's really interesting. So one thing I liked was they you showed these cabinets that they had in like a fighting game, and you're sitting on one side and they're sitting on the other side. Yeah. I don't know if you so kind of that yeah, 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 you're fighting is behind you. So it's instead of side by side playing each other, each other, they're sitting on the other side. Yeah and you're both seeing the same thing. I thought that was cool. Okay, so we're going to show you how to discharge a monitor now. I'm going to hand it over to Tim, and he's already got some parts and things going here. So, Tim, take it away. All right. Well, probably the biggest questions that we get or have to do with monitor repairs. If you guys, anybody, uh, anybody scared of the monitor? Mm -hmm. You still? <laughs> used to be? Okay. Is anybody still scared of a monitor? Well, that's okay. Oh, good. Good. Well, we have a couple here. We're going to get you over your fear today. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, because we've all heard these horror stories, right? Oh, I know somebody in this tech, he was electrocuted and spent six months in the hospital. They're not true, right? <laughs> I don't think that, uh, I always tell people like this, uh, you guys know in the winter when you scrape your feet and you touch somebody and it, it, it hurts, right? <laughs> Pow! And uh, I know the teenagers at church and stuff, they like to do that. And they touch somebody. Well, that's actually about two to 4,000 volts. That's why it hurts. 
But how, how long does it hurt? Just a second, right? So the same way kind of getting popped with a monitor. Um, I do say this, though, whatever goes in comes out. Okay, so Tim, let go ahead and I'll show everybody why you're doing this. I'm going to explain to everybody what's going on. So Tim is actually taking just your average household extension cord that you would buy at Big Lots, Walmart, wherever. Right. And he's cutting the ends off of it. A lamp cord. Lamp cord good. works too. Uh, you really, uh, you only need the two wire cord for this. And we're going to cut the ends off. I think, what did you pay for this, a, a dollar? It was a dollar. Okay. So Big dollar. Lots or Harbor Freight. So what we're going to do then is we're going to... Uh, Take the ends here. And while you're doing that, I'm going to explain to everybody what they need real quick, just like as far as tools go. Sure. I'll get you out of the way here. Um, of course, you'll need a large flathead screwdriver. Okay, and we'll show you what, what that does here in a second. You'll need some alligator clips. You'll need an extension or lamp cord, which is what Tim has right now. You'll need electrical tape. You can also use heat shrink or a heat gun. That's up to you if you're you know, really you know, retentive about how it looks. It's, I usually use electrical tape. It's not that big a deal. Um, we have wire strippers, of course, you'll need, nippy cutters, and then a soldering iron and some solder. So you do have to have at least some soldering skill in order to do this. Okay, so what Tim did first is he cut the ends off. Strippers. Okay, so let's get some strippers out. Okay, so I cut both ends off. We're just going to strip these. You guys ever use these strippers? Yeah. Cheap. I actually have a, I like a better pair, I guess the more that I do, but, you know, for, what are these, two dollars at Harbor Freight or something, you know, you about can't beat them. Any safety tags or whatever, just cut them off and throw them away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, do, you guys know that the technical way to fix this is about a two hundred dollar tool that will safely drain it down. I'm telling you that. That is the ideal way. Everybody here that has 200 extra bucks to spend on that tool, you can ignore everything else. We're going to show you how to do it for five bucks, right? Okay, so, I, I mean, you do want to be careful. Um, you know, we are talking high voltage. Uh, the main thing that, that I will stress is that you do unplug it. Yeah, makes sense, right? I have a story yeah. about that that involves him not unplugging it. Okay. <laughs> With me sticking it's a only an hour time, John. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was showing you the proper way not to do it. Oh, well, no. I always tell everybody about our DVDs, and you'll find that we don't claim to be the arcade gods and know it all, but most of the time we can tell you what not to do because we've done it and we've tried it. I took both ends and just wired them together. You don't need, you could even just use one of these. I prefer to use both cords just because it's a little thicker. And uh, so then here's the alligator clip. You guys are familiar with these. Okay, and then we're just going to slide this on here, or up in there. Actually, I like to take this part off. Yeah, and we usually take off that plastic sheeting. Just, just because to get to I can't little. really see very good if I've got it in there right. Then all I'm going to do, sorry, is crimp that on there really good. Okay, you know, give it a, if I pull hard enough, that'll come off, but you know, snug. Everybody with us so far? And we're going to do the Any same, questions? same thing to the other end. And I know most of you guys probably have done or seen this, but sometimes it's just good for practice and also to have in your toolbox. I keep one on me all the time. Okay, so now we've got two ends bound. Now, uh, this was, we did talk about you know, you still have some kind of wire showing here. I mean, you don't have to go super out of the way. John, talk about. Right. We usually like to solder it at this point, and if you have soldering skills, we would highly recommend that you do that. All right. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing. We'll do it now. So you don't necessarily have to, but just for safety's sake, it's nice if it's got a nice, good connection. So, I'm going to hold it here while Tim does a little bit of solder work. Don't burn me now. Be the first time, right? This week. Uh, we'll make a good connection here. Now, if you guys need to you know, brush up on your soldering skills, maybe you don't have any, we highly recommend going to garage sales, flea markets, and picking up old VCRs, pulling circuit boards out, and go to town. So okay. that's a great way to learn. Then, I mean, this is not, the, the goal of this is not to make a beautiful looking tool. We're making a five buck tool. Works great. Okay, so then we're going to just, I just don't want any bare wires sticking out. Okay. 
you know, something like this. Okay. And I guess since we're somebody could actually use this, maybe we'll give it away. <laughs> I could always use an extra. We'll do this one too. Alright, I'm gonna tape this end up. I probably have the one that I made ten years ago. I still use it. Like I said, you could use heat shrink and a heat gun instead of electrical tape if you just anal and want it to look really pretty. Okay. What do we do next? You guys know? All right. Get a screwdriver, okay? Um, preferably, not, not necessarily, but preferably one with some kind of rubber handle on this end. The first time I did this, I looked like I was fixing a, a power washer car or something. I had rubber <laughs> gloves on, rubber boots. Because, you know, we, we heard all these just these horror stories and that stuff. I, yeah, eye I, I goggles, goggles and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> I'm not that careful anymore. Maybe I should be. But um, so what, what you're going to do is clip on to your screwdriver, okay? Now, of course, we got a monitor here for reference sake. Um, we don't have to plug it in yet. That you know you're going to ground to your chassis. Now, right here, we're not really grounding right because we're not in a cabinet, and I don't have ground wires running. You guys understand that much. Normally, you want to do this while it's in the cabinet. But if you have one that's sitting on a shelf, uh, monitors can hold a charge. Who, who knows how long? Up to like a year, some of them. Fortunately, this is a brand new monitor. And a lot of your newer monitors discharge pretty pretty good. I don't even know if this one will pop just because it's brand new. A lot of the newer ones, they have circuits and stuff that help discharge that. The older ones, like a G07 or something, usually give you quite a show. Uh, if you want to scare your kids or something, you know, turn the lights off when you do this. It's really cool. Um, just a little bit about the, the monitor. This is the same as a TV. We just, we don't have, it's not encased, right? It's a, it looks like a TV. In fact, uh, after I learned to discharge, degaussing was the coolest thing I ever done. I went around and degaussed everything in the house. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to like the department store at Walmart, and I want to take my degaussing one up there and just degauss them for the heck of it. But but you know, this is just looks like a TV. And here's our chassis and our neck board. This thing right here, this is where you'll see a lot of times. Of course, this company right here is probably not the not the best. But um, you'll see high voltage, things like that. You know what this is called? Anode. All right, this is the anode, okay? Now, the high voltage comes from the flyback, right? Or it comes through there, and it comes around and goes into your tube. Now, here's what you may not know. Most of the time, when you get popped, it's not this that does it. It's inside that hole that this goes into. You see, it's from the tube is what holds the charge most of the time. Okay? So very simply, you know, we're going to slide our screwdriver under here. Of course, I'm real safe with my bare hands, but... Oh, there it was. You can hear it, yeah. You don't hear that? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're not done, right? Because now it's done, I'm just going to take it and start working, right? It's always good to do it at least twice. Sometimes I'll wait another 30 seconds or so. Uh, this new of a monitor are probably going to be safe, but you never know. No. See, I'm good now. And so I'm actually going to use the screwdriver as a tool to get that out of there. You see, I want to make sure where the pop usually comes though is from here, this hole. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They're popping over here and they're not seeing nothing. Then they go with their wedding ring or something, they come back over this way. Pow. Okay. Good idea to take off all wedding rings. Yes. Practice. Yes. Tell your wife you're sorry. You're, you'll <laughs> put it right back on. But for the time being, you want to do that and stuff. Okay. You guys have any questions about that? See, not not a real big deal. The first time you do it, especially on older monitors, you'll really get a loud pow. You know, you don't feel it. You don't feel anything. Let's hook this back up. I want one of you scaredy cats to come up here. Who, who hasn't done this before? <laughs> guy in a blue shirt, right here. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay, he's going to hook it back up. We are going to power it up. And then, okay. we'll let you try it. We're going to power up the markers. We don't want to do this with the power on. We're just going to let it get some high voltage here. 
It's charger. Yeah. Uh, got the. Right. Yeah. And you'll hear it. We'll let it fire in the hole a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now we want to unplug the game. Okay. You made your tool. Yep. You don't want to grab it by here, yep. right? Okay. Okay. So we're going to go right under the suction cup. All right. Here, I'll help you. Yeah, you can help me out. So. Okay. Right there. Oh, you, go. you can hear it. Yeah. yeah. I was holding it. I'm holding the rubber piece. Yeah. Good. Ready again? Yeah. I, I would. Did. Wait. Twice. You can get under there with that. Double <laughs> wait. Yeah. Okay. Hit it again. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, it did a little tiny bit there, okay? Now, granted, it's not as strong as the first time. Sometimes, but even when we take it off, you go ahead and push it in. Push it in. Uh huh. And see, I'm using. Now we'll do the other side. Yeah, push that in. We're out. Okay? I'm going to get my hands a good tool. And we get a noise package. So, a cordless drill and everything you need to make your own. Oh, Your own. Yeah. <laughs> the bean brain. Yeah, the bean brain. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else want to try? Everybody, everybody does it? <laughs> we got some more prizes. We okay. gotta come up and do it. Alright, let me back up. Now I have a friend that owns a TV repair business. He never, as long as you're touching the rubber part, yeah, he doesn't really care. Yeah, no kidding. I'm always at that point where I care. A friend of ours named Stan, which you see in some of our videos, yeah, you can go ahead and fire it up. Uh, a friend of ours named Stan, he said, oh, I've never been shocked, never been shocked, never been shocked. Come over there and grabbed it one day. Didn't say much at all and went, I'll use a discharge until from now on. I'm like, why? He has a permanent scar right on his thumb where it, it popped in pretty good. All right? So, you got it, Uncle Luke Johnson? I do. All right, so we want to make sure we turn the power off. Can't stress that enough because you're working sometimes, you're just not thinking. Johnson does have an interesting story. I'm like, oh, but John. And he's like, why do you worry? I'm like, I don't know, try again. <laughs> what the heck? This modern shark uh, is holding the most power I've ever seen. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, so we have our tool. We want to hold it on the rubber part. Okay, you want to get it up under there. Ah, everybody heard it? Okay, let's wait, give it, you know, another 20 seconds or so. And we're going to do it one more time. Okay, I think we're good. Now at this time, yeah, we can, we can kind of peel that back. You can push that in. There we go. Good job. Your name? Kevin. Kevin. I'm Kevin. Okay. Good job. Good job, Kevin. All right. So again, you know where it's coming from most time is right here. So be careful with that. Now, you guys got to remember, I, I didn't go to formal electronic school for this, and I know that somebody's on the on my YouTube page screaming at me right now. That's not the only place that can pop you, and they are correct. Uh, your larger capacitors can do that, okay? So, you know, I, I'm, and I'm just, I'll just tell you guys, I'm real simple, you know? I'm like taking the screwdriver. I remember my first time, I'm like, I'm touching this heat sink, I'm touching this. I'm just anywhere possible, and that's not a bad idea. But most of the time, if you pop that, this will discharge pretty fast, or this will not nowhere near hold the capacitance or the pop that that does. Okay. But these large capacitors can hold a charge. Most of the time, you know, just do that and uh, you'll be fine. Anybody else want to come up and try it? Everybody else done this? You done, what about you in the back? You done this before? No, I haven't done it before. Well, come, no, on, come, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Everybody get back. Yeah, come, come on. on. Come on now. All right. You're going you're gonna to own a video game. Okay? Yeah. Okay? You need to learn this, right? Because <laughs> why, why are we doing this? Why do we... Why do we care? Why this is the first step to taking our chassis out. Yep. Our chassis right. out. Yep. Even if you can't repair it, you you're not going to send the whole monitor yeah. off. You're going to send just the chassis off, right? Okay? So look, I'm going to put... Don't plug it in yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i get you back for that. And I'm, that's what I'm worried about. He usually takes the... Okay? Okay, here we go. Got power. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Half the lights went off in the pimple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who did that. Okay. All right. There's your screwdriver. All right. 
It's unplugged, right? We'll make sure it's unplugged. Okay, get that screwdriver <laughs> under there. <laughs> all right, better the screwdriver mm -hmm. and your finger than your finger, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to wait just a few minutes or 30 seconds, so give it a little time and we're going to do it again. And uh, I know that Kevin said that it did a little pop on the second, yeah. just a little, but better again to, to be safe. Do it one more time. Yeah, small. Okay, all right, now let's get it off of there. So you can, well, <laughs> I popped it off. Great job. I, I ran out of good parts, but you do get a digital multimeter. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Thank you. All right. Um, again, um, I should mention this, that this is a color vector monitor like you'll see in Pac-Man, Galaga. Oh, yeah. Vector <laughs> color vector monitor. Color vector, thank you very much. See, I like to keep my uh, class on their toes. <laughs> listening. This is a raster monitor. Now, um, John up in uh, Canada, what's his name? He will he will scream at me if I tell you to do this with a black and white monitor. Yeah. Um, they do make a discharging tool. It's a good tool to have, but when you're on the go and on the fly, a lot of times this just having this in your toolbox or in your truck or something works for most of the time. Especially because a lot of times you guys don't know what to do. You can after you do this, you can pull this chassis off and you can at least send it off for repair. Or if you're going to do your cap kit or whatever. So we wanted to show you guys how to make this. Who needs one? You get to the guy that popped it last. Okay. Oh. Yeah, he needs it because we didn't have one. <coughs> Obviously, make sure you do this with the game powered off, unplugged, preferably. So hey, can I add one one thing to what you after when you're in that state right there, after you've popped it, popped it, and it's discharged, that tube is of course acting as a capacitor. If you go back up to the with that disconnected that hole right there will kind of regenerate. Mm -hmm. So before you put the cup back, before you put it back on, yeah. hit it one more, time. one more time. You cannot hit it enough. Right. Yeah. 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 You, I cannot, mean, you cannot discharge yeah. the hole. The, hit the hole before yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hit yeah. the yeah. hole. Yeah. That's where you, that's where you, that's where and, you get you. Um, I had an assistant one time, and that's what he had. I think he had a watch or something on. And he wasn't even close to there. He was just over here, and literally, pow! And uh, it was pretty pretty scary. We uh, but you know I've heard I've heard these horror stories, but I've really I've honestly never heard of anybody that had to go to the hospital. It will make you wish you hadn't done it. Yeah. But I really <laughs> never really have found anybody. But I don't want to be the first either, right? So we want to take our time. We want to do it the right way. But we if you can overcome this, this is probably one of the biggest things in a game. And if you ever worked on any game, but most of the time. Keep it unplugged. If you can unplug the game, you know, everything works better when it's plugged in, but it also keeps from shocking a lot of times when it's unplugged. So be careful. We do want everybody to be safe. If you want to wear rubber gloves and all that, you know, nobody's knocking it, right? <laughs> nobody's going to fault you. Um, I do recommend that you have rubber mats in your game room or work area so that, you know, you're not holding. Remember what I said, how, what do most games operate on? If we hook up a power supply, we hit 120 AC, and what kind of DC voltages are coming out of there? 512. 512 and negative 5 on 99% of our games. And how much is that static shock? Could be 2,000 volts. Yeah. So imagine what even just the static could do to your circuit board or, or, or your game or whatever. So we do want to be careful. Uh, a lot of times I'll tell my gamer attendants if we have to take a board out, I'll say march, you know, don't drag your feet, march, we'll march with it. You'll get stuff in the mail, you'll always be in an anti-static bag or whatever, those are good to have around. So we do, but we do want to be safe. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We'll, this is a fun hobby. And, but we don't want to be in fear of it either because fear will keep us from fixing stuff or going and doing things. Once you get over that, you can just about do anything with that chassis now. Take it out, do some soldering on it. Again, like Jonathan said, if you're not good at soldering, Guess what? We have DVD number two that teaches you how to solder. Uh, we have four DVDs out. The latest one is a two-disc set. Uh, we, we teach a lot of different things. A lot of our content is available on YouTube. You can search Arcade Repair Tips. I think we have over 50 videos that we show. Any of you guys ever seen our videos before? 
Uh, most of you, some of you, okay. Well. Uh, can I add one thing about the discharging a monitor? Um, we also take questions, we have a podcast that we do, like a little radio show that you guys can listen to, it's available out there for free. And we take these questions from people, I don't know how many, Tim, we've gotten from people who are so scared to do this part right here. Right. They're like, if I just let it sit there for a couple of days, will it just discharge on its own, will I be okay? Uh, guys, we're always going to err on the side of caution and make, making sure that we discharge the monitor as much as possible. All right. How many of you were the kids that licked the battery to see if it was good? <laughs> <laughs> That's worse than that. Come on now, it's not really that bad. Overcome your fear, and, and, and you don't want to pay somebody to come out and have to do this. You know, work if you got games, especially pinball games. We're, I mean, we're this work, pinball is a big deal, right? If you got pinball games, you're going to work on them, or you're going to pay a lot of money. And arcade games the same way. Most problems come from monitors. And so if you can learn how to conquer that, at least nothing else, you can send it off to somebody without having to ship the whole monitor and everything else like that. You guys got any questions about that? Or about our DVDs or anything? I have a question, but it's not really about the sure. monitor. Uh, like when you guys uh, are replacing power supplies, I guess that's another common point of failure. Do sure. you recommend those sort of aftermarket switching power supplies or like those arcade shop kits, those kinds of things? Or do you like to just go back to the original well, and you know, cap them out? I so. used to say this. I would be like, ah, oh, I put switchers in everything. And I, my, if you heard me five, six years ago, I'd be like, oh, your defender's not working? Put a switcher in it and get the kit. But uh, I talking to uh, Ken Graham, Ken Ken Graham, Graham. The, yeah. the more I listen to him, the more I understand that they're good in most of your newer JAMA games. I would say they're, they're great. But if you can fix a linear power supply like in a Defender or something, they're just better. I mean, they're better they're designed for, for the that hardware. game. Right. The hardware is made for that, that yeah. voltage that that Williams power supply puts out. Right, exactly. Right. So, it, depending on the game, somewhere. and uh, of course, you know, if sometimes you got to do what you got to do if it's what you got. But at the same time, I'm just one of those, I'm old school, I just like original stuff. There's a reason it was in there, right? And they made it for that game. I'm just kind of like that old Atari power supplies, and most of them are pretty good. Now, if you've got a Street Fighter, switching power supply all day long. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't have a Street Fighter. But, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, all Atari <laughs> really stuff. But, but like, with those old linear power supplies, what's the point of failure? Is it cold solder joints or? Well, no, most of the time. Caps. Caps. Yeah, caps. Yeah, yeah, they, they're they caps. So they're transistors. Voltage, the voltage regulators. I mean, you know, uh, one of the great things, and. Uh, he gave us permission today. Ken gave us a troubleshooting chart that he uses, and we're going to be posting that soon on our website. We have a lot of those. Williams games. Yeah, for so Williams games. Williams Defender. Well. Which I think would. And, and Atari has test points on theirs. So a lot of times, if point A is good and point B is good, but C way over here is good, I take a real simple approach to fixing games. I mean, I very seldom get out books of schematics and all this. I mean, do you? I, I mean, I do. But at the same time, if it's good here, good here, good, not good here, and around here is a whole bunch of caps, you know, I'm, I'm like, I bet somewhere in this area. Kind of like your power supply area in your monitor. But, so, keep it simple. Don't try to overthink it. Just, you know, and, and, but if you need help, that's what we're here for. We got, got questions, we'll find some answers. And we'll, if we don't know, we'll tell you, but we'll find somebody who does. We'll ask Eric. <laughs> anyway. Um, and Anyway, good to see you, John. You ready to roll? So you already learned some pinball stuff now? <laughs> we got anything else to give out? I, I have one more multimeter. Who needs a multimeter? Raise your hand. <laughs> Here, <laughs> you need a multimeter. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. guys, I guess that wraps it up. Cool. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's play some fix the game. Let's play some games. That's right.